Good morning, UCY.TV radio listeners. This is Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission radio show. Today is May 16th, 2016. Thank you for joining our radio show. As you know, on Mondays, we normally interview activists from St. Louis. Today, we're going to veer from that format a little bit simply because we did uh, me and Kevin Finnegan well, uh, at the behest of uh, my guest, Mimi German, we went out to the Columbia Generating Station, and uh, I think, uh, you know, Kevin resists this phrase, but I think we sort of fracked our way into the environmental uh, movement with the anti-nuclear statement. As you know, most of the anti-nuclear, the anti, the environmental organizations out there, they never mention nuclear as being toxic and filthy and green. They always look at it as like it might be a good solution for us when we're getting off of fossil fuel. And uh, there's a campaign going around called Break Free, and it's about break free from fossil fuels. Mimi came up with this brilliant idea to break free no nukes Northwest and go protest out at the at the Columbia Generating Station, which is a decrepit old building that is literally falling apart as we speak, in my view. I went, I, I went out there, Kevin Finnegan and I drove out there. It took us six hours. So first, without any further ado, let me introduce Mimi. Uh, Mimi, are you on the line with us? I am. Can you hear me? Well, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate your brilliant idea to go inject ourselves in this movement. So why don't you give our listeners a little bit of information about the Break Free campaign? Well, I'm certainly not a spokesperson for the Break Free campaign, but um, I know that it's an international movement and people are really fed up with, um, you know, our our desire to continue and use fossil fuels you know, to the extent that we are. And it's time to keep them in the ground and move forward with um, as much clean energy as we can as this ship goes down. And um, in, in my view, the ship is still going to go down. But in the meantime, we have life to deal with while we're here. And that's where my activism has come in at this point. It's, it's taken a turn um, in acknowledging that our Earth ship is going down. And we've done that to ourselves. But the fact is, we are still here. The animals are still here. The plants are still here, though we're dying at, at rapid rates. And it's going to continue to escalate. In the meantime, how do we want to, how do we want to, you know, um, um, guide this course? And for me, with my interest being the no nuke interest in all of this primarily, we need to insert ourselves into the conversation that is being heard around the world, which is through the organization of 350.org, which refuses to say out loud that nukes are dangerous, they are killers, um, and basically they trump just about anything, you know. Um, they all leak, and nuclear weapons kill. The whole, the, the whole you know, um, military complex regarding nukes was made to kill, and that's exactly what it's doing. And yet 350 refuses to say from their leaders um, we need, we're adding nukes into this conversation. Every time we talk about fossil fuels, we're going to add nukes into that. We're going to talk about uranium. We're going to talk about what it's done to the indigenous people around the globe. And um, they won't do that. So I said, you know what, man, fuck it. Let's, let's inject ourselves into their conversation by hopping in to break free from nuclear. And you and Kevin were so awesome. I couldn't go this weekend. Um, I'm caring for my dog, and she comes first for me. And you went, and you took part in that. And now we are inserting our message that nukes all need to be shut down immediately and not held on to, which is the message of 350.org, that we do hold on to nukes while we're pulling ourselves right. off of fossil fuels. That's ridiculous. Yes. And, and it's a lie. And they, when they perpetuate that lie, they also tell you that nukes are clean, that they don't have a, a, a carbon footprint. And it's, it, it's just crazy that people even listen to that. That's the part that blows my mind, which goes back to me feeling that people are just stupid. Um, so anyway, that's where we're at. And you and Kevin are my current heroes. And so while the Anacortes um, up in Washington is huge, uh, demonstration locked onto the tracks up there to prevent um, the oil trains from coming through. Friends of ours were up there, are up there. Uh, many people were arrested. 
um, you and Kevin were over at CGS New Plant telling them over there, and they sure as hell saw you. Yes, that, they did. Oh, we're coming. We are coming for them. We are coming to shut this down, and there's so much that we have in our hands right now with the initiatives that are now out in the world to shut down CGS. We should talk about that, too. Please do. Um, and, um, you know, we're going to get a lot of the break free folks from Washington to help us out with shutting down CGS as well as work with the initiatives. So lots of things are coming in, in, in our, in our clean pipeline. Well, why don't you explain the initiative before we get into what we did in our action, what happened with that? Why don't you tell people about the initiative and is there a way for people to participate with that initiative? Is there an online place to signature? Is this just walking the streets and getting signatures? Um, this is not a sign up thing. This is not easy. Um, shutting down a nuke plant isn't easy and we're, we, we can't make it any easier than we've already done, which is to create two initiatives, uh, both to shut down CGS. The only people who can sign these initiatives are people who live in the state of Washington and have an address in Washington. And we need, um, we have until, uh, December of 2016 to gather 260,000 signatures per initiative. Wow. And, and if that happens, if that happens, then it goes into their legislature, and then the legislature moves forward with it. But um, we have to get those signatures first. Now, I'm not – I actually am expecting that we can get far with these initiatives. And if we don't, what we will have accomplished is – acknowledging is is helping people in Washington understand that there is a nuclear power plant because as your listeners know from having me on the show before people in Washington do not know that the Columbia generating station is a nuclear power plant it is not Hanford though it is located near Hanford it is leaking constantly 24 7 especially when fuel rods are leaking which they are and um, this is an effort for us to enlighten all of the citizens of Washington State. So even if we don't get all of the signatures this time around, we will go at it again with more initiatives, and that, and the next time, people will all know that there's a nuclear power plant that needs to be shut down. And I don't expect to get any pushback from citizens who are, you know, being made aware in that moment that, oh, my God, we have a nuke plant? I didn't know we have a nuke plant. Of course I want the nuke plant shut down because that's common sense. Okay, so let me ask you this about the initiatives. I know just from people contacting me, we have a handful of listeners just to this show specific who are very faithful listeners. Where could they go to get this initiative? Is there a place they could go to print it out and start walking the streets in their own neighborhoods, in their own areas to try to get to that 250,000 member? Is there some place to get yes. Yes, yes. Um, if you go to radcast.org, and I'm going to go there right now so I can get you exactly to the right place on Radcast, um, there is a page in the menu bar that says Washington Initiatives. And that is where you go. And when you go there, yeah, Washington Initiatives to shut down CGS, you click on that, and it's in the menu bar. Yeah, right and in the there's a letter that I've written to the people to explain this, how you, you know, print these off. And there are two highlighted links, and it's 855 and 856, and you'll see them there. It says, we need you to contact your friends and family in Washington State to gather signatures on these initiatives. And right beneath that, you'll see two yellow um, highlighted links. Those are the initiatives. You can send those initiatives to Kinko's or any printer. Local printers are even better because you're supporting your local printer. Um, and get those done. These, due to Washington State regulations, these have to be on 11 by 17. Wow. So people don't, it, it's going to be hard for you to print these at home. So you just take those two initiatives and send them off to your printer and let them make you your copies. And each copy, all the instructions are there. It's yeah, two. I see that. It's pretty, 11 by 17, and it must only be two-sided. So it's not like somebody who is at home who has a printer or even the 8 by, four, uh, eight by 14. That's not good enough. You have to get, a, they, interestingly enough, technically speaking, they make this difficult for people at home to print out. You have to go to a printer pretty much. You, the, the whole initiative proce process in Washington um, seems to be much more difficult than the measure ballots and things that we have to go through in Oregon. Wow. And it, it was very interesting and enlightening me, to me to see that. And I thought, wow, what lobbyists 
because you know it was a lobbyist. What lobbyist right. went to the legislature in Washington and said, let's make the initiative process really hard so that the people have to abide by what we've already constructed and live by that because who the hell would want to create an initiative that's made so difficult for you to deal with and navigate? You know, and they won't. You know, well, here we are. We've done it. And we have two of them. And they're both for the same ends, which is to shut down CGFs. Mm-hmm. Well, let me let me stop here. I hear a little bit of feedback on my part. Are you hearing any feedback on your end? I have none on my end. Great. I'll just keep going then. Um, so this is what I'm thinking. Like with this initiative, I'm sort of inclined for I would be willing. I'm going to go get some printed out. I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do. And this is for all of my listeners in Washington. And, in fact, next week I'm going to Washington to help my niece and take care of her. I'm bringing her this initiative, and I'm going to walk in her neighborhood. I'm going to go walk up. Can I, as a non-resident of, of Washington, get this initiative signed, or does it have to be a Washington resident? Bet you can. We called and made sure that anyone can go to Washington. You just have to sign. There's a little sign thing. There's a um, on the form. You just put who you are because the person right has to have the who you are. But yes, you are allowed to be from out of state as long well, as awesome. All signatures are from Washington State, and you just have to make sure they have an address. Awesome. Well, this is my this is my point here. Is I happen to be going up to Washington next weekend, and I am going to walk up there. But I will say this to any of my listeners who are in Washington, because I know there are some many people. I mean, a, a good I can think of five or six people right off the top of my head who contact me and say, "I'm living in Washington. Thank you for getting out this information about Hanford." I am going to print out some of these initiatives on my own dime. I'll get them printed out, and if you want them contact me and i'll mail them to you because this is we have until december there i don't believe that there's any reason we should not be able to have 250 signatures between now and december that's that, 250,000. yes we could easily do that if we had 10 or 15 people out there walking in through different neighborhoods throughout washington signatures add up i've actually done that i've actually canvassed an entire neighborhood here in eugene that nobody even canvassed and the neighborhood that i canvassed made a difference in getting a very progressive candidate elected to the county commissioner's seat so it does matter what happens people that's awesome lonnie yeah. yes yes and it was like about i mean honestly i went walking three hours a day every weekend for four weekends i think we covered several thousand homes like we went through huge like it was about four thousand homes in the period of time of a few weeks you just walk through honestly it's a little bit draining because you know people will be rude to you they might want to talk to you but on a, we it is so worth it because once once you kind of get your thing down once you go through it a little bit you sort of lose your anxiety lose your fear people understand they get it that you are you know what you're talking about they're not immediately questioning you and honestly it's not that difficult to get these initiatives signed we it is up to us folks this is one position of activism where all of us can take action so yeah. anyone living near Washington who can be in Washington and just go walking throughout neighborhoods any city in Washington get those signatures signed you know, I, I hear about people doing, um, you know, collecting lots of money for their initiatives and the whole process. And so the question was posed to me, so No Nukes Northwest is who is sponsoring this initiative. And that's, of course, our group. And um, we, we are a grassroots movement, meaning, unfortunately, we, we have no money. And it's actually easier that way to move forward with this initiative because it, I, I, don't, do, um, I don't do bureaucracy. I just don't. And... In order to do an initiative and have lots of money coming in or any money coming in, you have to form, you know, these committees and on and on. And I, I, I'm repelled. I'm repulsed by the whole I, – I just don't do bureaucracy. So I said that because No Nukes Northwest is who we are, we're a very radical left um, – at least those of us who formed No Nukes Northwest are radical leftist activists who do what we need to do. And so in this case – this is up to the people. If the people know that um, there is a nuke plant and they are pissed off that there's a nuke plant and want to do something about it, well, hey, man, grab an initiative, throw your name on it, and go take it around and get signatures for it. This is about us. This isn't about somebody doing it for you, you know. And right. as far as I'm concerned, if people want to take part, man, there's ample access for you to take part. And if you want someone else to do it for you, it ain't going to happen. You know, we're going to have the nuke plant. And the reality is... 
that this new plant is located on 12 fault lines, which were not known at the time of the build of this new plant. So that's new. And um, there are pinhole... Um, th there are pinhole size fractures in the fuel rods, um, possibly due to the last shipment of uranium uh, for the rods, and those aren't being dealt with. There are cracks in the building. There are fires in Washington. Every year they get closer and closer, and they're on the Hanford Reserve now. Not currently, but they've been on the Hanford Reserve, which is where CGS is located. You know, there are so many. The, the Columbia River is getting warmer with uh, rapid climate change. And the water from the Columbia is the water for the cooling rods, you know, for the, the fuel pools. So with all of these things and more, just human error that I haven't even talked about, we, we have spreadsheets of how many times the NRC has done inspections and uh, surprise inspections and found managers inside the nuclear power plant working the control board, either stoned, drunk, on um, uh, major drugs, you know, these people are running the new plant. This is so serious. All of these things are so serious. But, hey, you know, if you guys want to leave this plant up and not do anything, that's going to be the result. Or the, the, the flip side is you help out, man. Go to radcast.org. Go to where it says Washington Initiatives. Go take them to a printer. Carry them with you. Tell your friends there's a new plant. Yeah. And them to sign. I am definitely getting some printed out so that anybody can contact me. I know we have several people who really are financially challenged. So, like dealing with getting a printer and even paying two, three, four, five bucks causes anxiety. Like this is not what that's about. It's not about how am I going to get it done. So, I'm just going to tell this to my listeners that I am going to get these things printed out. If you want to contact me, you can you know contact me at nuts for art at Gmail, Lonnie Clark at Facebook. Uh, you know, there's plenty of ways. If you Google me, that's easy ways to get in touch with me. I can definitely get you this initiative. And I'm definitely going to be talking to people when I go to Washington and handing them out and, and trying to enlist three people. I'm going to do like the network marketing plan of this. You know, if everybody gets three people and three people, everybody will have a lot of people. And so by December, we could have 250,000 signatures. That's not an impossibility. For goodness sakes, we're only in May. So we have plenty of months and plenty of time, and I know that winter's coming and there's a lot of rain. But, you know, when yesterday, I have to say, I was mortified at what we are doing to our planet. This is the first time I've ever even been near a nuclear power plant. Like, I know I drove past uh, San Onofre a million times when I was a kid. But I actually thought, like I said, it was actually a, an observatory, right? I never even internalize that thought so going out here and then being helicoptered you know kind of followed around by police that was kind of super creepy out there i mean it was they put this thing out in the middle of nowhere mimi it's like way out in the middle of nowhere you're driving down this road and you see this sign it's right next to hanford and it says designated dump sites <laughs> really that's just, and it's not like there's tanks or anything. It's just, it's open desert. It, you're like, where are they putting these dump sites? There's no tanks. There's nothing out there. It's freaky. It is, like I have to say, it was one of the most surreal experiences I've ever had in my life. I've been there many times, Lonnie, and it never becomes less surreal. I just have to tell you that. And it never, I've never gone there and at ease. You know, like there's this feeling inside you of... Um, Could you speak a little closer to your mic? Because we can barely yeah. hear you. There. Sure. Is that better? Yeah, a little bit better. Uh, I can try this. Is that better? No, that's actually worse. Huh. Okay. I can hear you just great. Okay. Well, let's just keep going. Okay. So, um, is this any better? Yes, that's a lot better. Okay. I feel like the commercial for the that cell phone. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Can you hear me now? So... I, the the feeling that we get every time, well, for me, every time I go is um, I feel desperate. Yeah. You know? And I don't feel scared anymore because I don't feel scared of the people. I don't feel scared of the cops. Um, I've already been interrogated there. They kept me for over an hour thinking I was a terrorist. And, um, you know, 
This is what they do. They go after the wrong people. The guards go after the wrong people. The guards and the police should be going after Energy Northwest, mm-hmm. who owns the thing, well, in part, who run the thing, and go arrest them. You know, the very people they work for are the people who are killing them. And everything is so upside down, inverted, and twisted. And when I go there, I feel, I feel very sane. You know, I feel like a very sane person witnessing um, very evil, evil, just evil, and with an imperative on their end to kill the planet. And so I kind of feel like I, I need, like, you know, we all need our super people capes, you know, to <laughs> sort of re- keep reminding us we're, we're the good ones and we're going to shut it down. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, that's what I kept telling Kevin. Like, he was, Kevin was very nervous, you know. It was a very nerve-wracking event because it takes a long, it took us, we thought it would take four and a half, five hours. It took us a little bit over six hours to get there. And when we arrived, we we actually put on our uh, protective gear before we got to Richland because I was freaked out. Like, I really did not want to breathe the air up there. And so we put on this, and we're driving through, so we're driving through, that little town of Richmond, we decided to take the face mask off because people were staring at us, right? So, And we find our way going down this road, and it was desolate, and it was beautiful all at the same time. Like, how could – that was the really cacophony of emotions. You're making this big, long journey. We're sort of driving off into nowhere. You know, when you don't know where you're going on your first trip, it's like off to nowhere, and it kept being longer than we thought. And it was so incredibly beautiful. I mean, the the the, the greenery, the the just how beautiful it was. The way the geology was, you could see that the way the earth moved up. There was these big gigantic cliffs. This is why the Indians considered that sacred ground a lot of that up there was sacred and really honestly you could see why and then you get there and you look at these dump sites and this big spewing out stuff and everybody up there is just sort of ignoring it acting like it's normal no big deal everybody it was really I have to say kind of very stunning for me to recognize and this was the other thing they had this we we posted some pictures there was the nuclear power plant spewing out its gas that like I guess it does every day there was another facility behind us that looked like it was an old place it had been abandoned I don't know what that was around the round circles and then across the way there was an experimental lab over there too so it's had an experimental thing so it's it isn't just like a little small one or two places they've got this stuff spread out all over the place up there and you know they're just dumping nonstop waste. I mean, it 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 was really stunning. The complete and then the the police officer like helicoptering us. It was like we did not want to get stopped or engage a police officer, so we did not go straight up to the gate. We drove we drove down this big long road, the power plant loop road, and at the sign, you know it. it Right as we passed it, because they saw us on the front, we sort of fussed around, missed the first entrance. So when we came down there, there was a guy parked in a truck just sitting there at the entrance at the end of the road, just kind of looking at us. And we went, you know, (laughs) we're like, you know, we don't want to go up there. We really, we wanted to take a picture right next to the sign, but we did not want to get engaged with any type of a police officer, security officer, because it's private, it's federal land we didn't know what we were in for so we just decided not to do it we stopped at the uh it warning sign and, and took our photos um it was a very um powerful event for me to be honest to realize like we have a planet that is being poisoned by i mean this made me very angry at the whole 350 the environmentalist groups who are basically pretending like nuclear might be a good alternative you know, the dead plants, the deadness up there was just astounding. You know, brown, brown, brown. There's a lot of dead areas up there. Well, the first thing to remember about up there is this this was not put in the middle of nowhere. In fact, this was put in the middle of somewhere. And the somewhere was in the middle of about 10 or 11 native tribes. And not uh-huh. all directly sitting right there, but... Throughout that entire region, there are about 10 native tribes there, or maybe a little bit more. 
And so that was very much of a somewhere. And the reason that they decided, the Manhattan Project decided, was they didn't recognize the, the, the life of the indigenous people. The indigenous people still don't matter to this day and are not recognized. And so that's where they put this. And it was next to a river so they could have water for um, the cooling rods. And they could also dump because they, I think they looked at the river as sort of a, a positive for dumping. And I, as sick as that is, I believe that that was really part of the thought process. Oh, great. We, and we have a river. The other buildings that you mentioned are part of Whoops 2, WPPS. And Whoops 2 was the largest bond default in the United States in the history of the United States. What happened was Hanford took, um, took out a bond to build all of these like seven or eight nuclear power plants. I can't remember anymore how many. They defaulted on every single one except CGS. And wow. that's the, so all those buildings that you were looking at, those were supposed to be more nuke plants. So they're not taking them apart. They're just going to let them rot. They're not taking they never, them down. They never were finished. They were never working. Um, they never were finished with the build. It was so expensive because of the corrupt contractors, which is still the case. Uh, which is the problem at Hanford itself, at the nuke dump. It's, it's contractors, it's corrupt contractors, and a corrupt government feeding those corrupt contractors. But all of those buildings were in the process of being built, and then they were just abandoned, as was the bond payback. But they're just leaving them there, and like half half baked they're not going to take them down they're not going to remediate like even take back the land and put it they're not gonna, i mean that kind of stuns me that those things have been out there and just left to rot yeah. like it was a project that went bad and they're just going to yeah. let it rot yeah that's exactly what they're doing and there's no there's there's nothing on the table about taking those buildings down at all they're just there you know and and to me it's sort of um a memo a, a a constant reminder of what insanity looks like. Yeah. You know. That is, like, who in their right mind would have a business model where you think you're going to build something and you get this lot of land and you build it halfway and realize you're over budget, the project's not going to work, and then you just abandon it on site and, continue, and you build somewhere else and do something else. On the, it's just such an eyesore. It's, just a, it's an insult to the efforts that they're making out there. It's, it's a, to me, it was, it, hearing that kind of shocks me because it really lets us know that they could care less about anything in this project. It's part, only about money. It's part of the military complex. It is only about money. That's exactly what it's about. It is not about life. It is not about the earth. It's not about honoring the tri-party agreement, which says that they're going to put the land back for the native people who are involved. Um, it has nothing to do with anything because they're government contractors. So, you know, it, it, there's no intention. There's never been an intention to fix anything. It is stunning. Do not they – they, they must be in just complete denial over that the harm – to human health, the harm to the life of our planet. They just, I mean, in order for them to participate in this, they have to be in complete denial about it. They, people choose who they want to listen to. And these people really love to listen to the scientists who are out there like James Hansen telling everybody. And remember, he was one of the um, originators of 350. He was on the board of 350, though he no longer is. And he is the guy. He's the guy. The guy who says nukes are safe. And, and people love these guys because they get to listen to them and they get to feel better. Whether it's people in the nuclear industry, they love those guys. But people on the ground, like people who are, are environmentalists, they love that guy. They're like, see, you, 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 you anti-nukers, you just want to stir shit up, you know? It's really fine. And, and we need to hold on to nukes for 10 more years while we pull off fossil fuels. That's where that shit comes from. The fucking Bill McKibbins. Yeah. James Hansen's, all of these people, the same goddamn circle is who perpetuates this myth. And people love the myth because it feels good. It's a little blanky for them. 
Well, not only that, they don't have to face, because this is the worst level of contamination. If you really were to face this whole idea that nuclear is clean and green and that it's really, we can just use it for a little while if only we could figure out what to do with that nuclear waste is such a lie. It is such a complete lie. It's not just the waste. It's even getting it to the nuclear power plant. It's filthy on the way from the beginning to the end. Uranium needs to stay in the ground. I mean, that's why I love that break free campaign, because really of all of them, we need to break free from uranium like that needs to stop immediately. I think uh, one of the things that I'm going to try to do with um, the initiatives is I have a couple of contacts for the native tribes up there. And the way that I think about these initiatives are groups of people are the best way to go. So if you, for instance, are part of a church, a synagogue, a mosque, a uh, meditation center, uh, um, you know, whatever your thing is, right, there's going to be more people than just you there. So take these initiatives there and hang out there and talk to other people there and get them to also take initiatives, have extras with you, give them to people there, and let them go out. So every person who, who gives you a signature, ask them if they would be willing to go and collect signatures. And in that way, we're going to be hitting up many more people than we would just on an individual level. So I want to go up to the tribes up there and say, hey, man, you know, we, we do have a way to shut this down. Do you want to participate? And then you get every member, if the tribes are in agreement, every member of the tribe to sign. You know, so it's it's lots of people at one time is my point, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah, rather than just standing in front of, you know, Trader Joe's or your co-op. Um, yeah. Let's think smart about this. Yeah, it is about getting other people engaged and actually doing that. That's actually true. That's actually a true statement. We need to get other other organizations up there that have a vested interest who understand the necessity of closing it down to give them the initiative to help them see that there is a way out, that there is actually something we could do. Right. And remember, folks, you can go to radcast.org, and on the menu bar is Washington Initiatives. Just go on there, find the hyperlinks. There's two of them, and go to work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, this thing at Columbia Generating Station, it was really, uh, we did get a bag of dirt. I'm going to be sending it to Mark Casabier to test. Uh, right next to that sign where we stopped, I got about three or four cups of dirt so we can test it to see what's in there. And But it was really completely stunning to see how decrepit the whole thing is. Like, they almost it's almost like they're just going to let it fall apart and keep it going. It feels like, you know, the old gray horse that you keep beating until it just falls dead. That's sort of what they're doing with this nuclear power. It is not at all in any way clean. I mean, it was really stunning how decrepit the whole place looked. Well, the fact is is that CGS is creating nuclear waste every single moment that it is online. And every other year they get to take the waste out and put it in casks, you know, and sorry, I'm going to turn that phone off. Okay. Um, they get to, you know, move the waste. And every time they move the waste, we have more leaks of radiation. It's impossible not to. Uh, every time the plant shuts down to remove waste and bring in new um, fuel rods, we have radiation leaks, you know, so it's just a 24-7 fiasco, really, and um, people have to start, I don't know, you don't have to do anything, but it would behoove all of us and the planet to finally grok the idea that there's nothing, not one thing, zero things about nuclear power that is okay, zero. I don't care what your argument is, I can, I can, I can nullify your argument. And the final result in nuclear power is death. And it, it has a, a process that gets us there. And that's just what it's for, you know. It's not for turning your light bulb on. It's for death. It was created as a death machine. It was created for nuclear weapons. And now Obama is amping up our nuclear weapons. And uh, Putin is amping up nuclear weapons. And isn't that great? What do you need in order to amp up your nuclear weapons? You need nuclear power plants. So the sooner we deal with this and start to shut them down, the better we'll all be. 
I can't say it enough. Can, can you explain that? Because this is a lot of people don't understand that, Mimi. When you say we need nuclear power plants, how does how do the nuclear weapons exactly? What do they use in the nuclear weapons from the nuclear power plant? How is that stuff converted? Because I've I've said this to people. You know, the only reason we have these nuclear power plants is to fuel the nuclear war machine, and they're like, that's absolutely not true. Because if that was true, we wouldn't have all this waste. If it was used, being used. So, we use all the waste. We use parts of the waste. And that's what goes into nuclear bombs. Right. You don't use every last thing. I mean, like, you know, you can just wiki it. You know, it's so much easier than wasting. Well, and it's also just like looking at uh, Energy Northwest at the Columbia Generating Station at their website. You look, go, we were trying to find the address. And on the page, it said nuclear myths. One of the first things it said was very little radiation co comes out, less, you know, less than 1% of the radiation leaks. And then it produces no more radiation than a banana. They're using that banana story all over again. And then it's just not that harmful that radiation just has not killed that many people. They have that right on their website. You know, people, of course they do. Um, they, most of the money that comes in to nuclear power, to the industry, goes into the PR machine that they have surrounding them. Right. Their lead wall is the PR machine. And their PR machine is greater than any other PR machine on Earth, except for maybe Hillary Clinton's. Hers is pretty damn strong, her PR you say machine. It's the same machine, it's the same it people. It's part of the same machine and the same people. Yeah, the same lobbyists. They just, you know, go out one door and in the other door. Right. So um, for it's time that people, like the people, we the people, Start to just get smart because you and I, Lonnie, can sit here all we want for, for the next 100, 100 years, if we had 100 years, to tell people that they're being lied to. And right. until the people decide that they're being lied to, they're not going to believe you or me, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's back to the stupid people thing that I have. You know, I just feel like the entire human species is really pretty dumb in comparison to every other living thing on our Earth. And the reason that I say that is we are the only species that has attempted and, uh, and uh, is, is winning at killing not just our own species, but the earth that we live on. And I don't know what, you know, how do you get, how do you get more dumb than that? So anyway, I don't have a lot of hope or faith in the human species overall at all. What I know is that a few of us out of those seven and a half billion people on this planet can come together and shut down some nuke plants so that our skin doesn't fall off as the ship is going down, which is what happens if you're near a nuke plant and it melts down. Your skin falls off. You, you know, it's not just about your hair. You get stripped. Your insides melt. I mean, this isn't, this, this is known. We have people now from Chernobyl who have witnessed this and happen to have lived through it and written about this. I mean, so I'm not here to convince people that um, they should be smart. I'm just saying, just get there, man, or don't get there. You know, these are the facts that we're laying out here. Nukes are made to kill. And they also, in the process, turn your lights on. So why don't you turn your lights off, you know? And the more that we turn our lights off and the more that we... we we consume less, the more that we can extract ourselves from the minute bit of nuclear power that Washington State has, you know, is generating for us in the first place. So there's lots of semi-easy answers out of this. One of them is the initiatives. Get the signatures. The other is consume less. Consume less energy in Washington and Oregon, and that nuke plant isn't going to have a foot to stand on anyway. Yeah, it's kind of like what they found out about San Onofre. Is like, did they really need the electricity it was generating? The answer was no. That was one of the major factors. That was the question that Donna Gilmore had the forethought to think, to actually ask, do we actually need the energy that's coming out of San Onofre? Not how much is being produced, but do we need the energy? The answer was unequivocally no. So that compiled with all the missteps and all the you know, really crimes against humanity that that management company was doing 
li forced, actually literally, for the government couldn't ignore it. That's how they closed it down. They couldn't in their conscious mind ignore all this cacophony of information that said this doesn't make sense. No matter how much the PR machines ran them by money and convinced them, it just didn't. That's what has to happen here. It just does, can't make sense that we continue with this Columbia Generating Station. Sitting again on 12 earthquake faults, like you say, that's the... That's the really shocking thing. It's on 12, not just one, it's on 12. Well, if you guys want to go, if listeners want to go and find out more about CGS, the truth about CGS, all of the terrible, they're called events. And every event is a terrible thing that occurs almost daily at CGS. And those events are posted on the NRC's pages. We collect those events and we put them and other bits of news about CGS on Facebook on Shut Down CGS. If you go on Facebook and you go to Shut Down CGS, you will see information about what happens at CGS. And um, I have to update. I have to get the initiatives on there. Yesterday was a very big day for me because we actually were ready to put the initiatives out. I was busy on Radcast. I was busy on Facebook. And I have to update Shut Down CGS. But that's where you can go for info. And it's two words. Shut Down is two words. It's two words. Shut Down CGS. Okay. That's really awesome. I actually did not know about that myself. So that's actually really great. We're keeping No Nukes Northwest as a private um, Facebook page. If you want to come into No Nukes Northwest, by all means, send me a message or whatever, and I will check you out. And if I feel like you are a real human who's interested in No Nukes, I'll let you in on that page. But that's more of a page for those of us who are activists. It's actually, this is a really great page because you have some articles posted here that I had seen. One was from the Newsweek, which I, blew me away. It came out just this month, uh, 5 13 16. And the title of it is Hanford Reservation is Still a, da is still a Dangerous $111 Billion Mess in Washington State. What blew me away with that was that was in mainstream media. That was mainstream media reporting like that. It, it's really bad when you know a mainstream media is going to report. So that's the headline. That's very true, Lonnie. When mainstream media is talking about it, it's super bad. And well, saying it like that, still a dangerous $110 billion mess. Well, that, you know, occasionally we get something in there, you know, the people, the people get heard. But Again, you know what's amazing, what really, what I reflected on when I saw that story initially, I didn't see it on Facebook when I initially read it, was the idea that they're still just talking about the money. 110, they're, they're focusing, you know, the, what caught my attention and probably 100% of everybody else is the $110 billion mess in Washington State, but they're not talking about the hum, harm to human health. I mean... That that really blew me away. Like the focus is on the money still. Like we're still having to pour all this money in, but they're not taught. Especially when I drove up there yesterday and saw this magnificently beautiful, I mean picturesque land that it is sitting in. It was just so magical. It was so beautiful, and to realize what our government, it looks, it still looks beautiful. But to recognize that that is one toxic slew and dump, a waste dump site, that whole entire area, my guess would be if we were to test anywhere along that whole Hanford stretch, Richland stretch for real radionuclides, it's probably got all kinds of toxins in it, everything. When I was up there in June, um, I went up to do testing. And there's a sign when you first get to the reserve, and it says, Welcome to Hanford. And I did a test with my Geiger counter at the sign, like just ambient air, and I did a test on the ground. Uh, normally, we don't test on the ground in general, but if we're near, um, if we're pretty sure that we're near, you know, a nuke plant, we do. And so the difference between the ground and the air weren't, weren't too notable by the sign. And as soon as I got about mm, not even a quarter mile, just yards, you know, maybe, um, I don't know, a 1,000 yards, 500 yards in is uh, site 203, or the th I'm sorry, the 300 site. And the 300 site was a remediated site. That's what they told us, remediated, fixed, no longer, you know, no longer radioactive. So there's no fencing. 
So I pulled in the road. And if you keep going down the road, you get to a vineyard. <laughs> and so anyway, I pulled off and kind of halfway between the main road and the vineyard. And I walked onto the dirt. My Geiger counter, it's in the air. It's not on the ground. My Geiger counter is already flipping out. And I get to a place and I stop and I do a test there. The difference between the front of the sign at Hanford and where I was on the 300 site, which again is only like, uh, you know, a thousand yards um, from there, was 267% higher than at the sign. So I'm like, holy crap, this is, I'm, I'm getting radiated here. So I get out and I drive down the road further, not the same road, the main road. And I see a bunch of workers. This is on a different site. Each, each area is called a site and it has a number. So I get to their their area, and I said, hey, wasn't the 300 site remediated? And they laughed. And I said, apparently not, huh? And they said, well, if you call that remediated. And he said, why? And I told him, I told them, a couple of workers. And they said, yeah, that's hot over there. You shouldn't be over there. And I said, I, I got that, you know? So they um, they let me know that they knew that, too. And so remediated areas, and again, folks, we're talking about Hanford right now and not the nuclear power plant, but the nuclear power plant is on the same land, okay? And very close. It was stunning how extremely close it was. I was, that's the one thing that really blew me away, how very close, like, with, you could see them within one per periphery, you know what I mean? Looking at them both, you could see the two sites. You didn't actually even have to turn your head. It was... You, you looked at a college campus and you saw one building on one side and a building on the other side at the other side of the campus, but you could see both sides. It's just like that, except it's all nukes. It, it was stunning, Mimi, at the complete lack of regard for life. And the dead desert, there's all these, you see these patches of just brown and gray out there. And you know it's not, you know, what month are we in? May. We should be seeing some greenery. And, in fact, one of the things that blew us away driving home, and I, I sort of coined them Fukushima trees, is the top quarter half of the trees are dead. A lot of the trees, the top quarter halves are dead. The bottom half is green. The top quarter half is dead. Now, you know, it's it's stunning how people don't see what's out there. You know, like the death and destruction that really is there. Very few birds. We did not hardly see any birds on the trip up there. It was really kind of a shock. And it was in such a beautiful area. After You know, you drive a half an hour away and you're in this middle of this beautiful gorge and just right next to the river. Looking at the river, you know, I told Kevin, I said, you know what's bizarre to think about? That river has plutonium in it. It has like, a lot of plutonium in it. It has, I mean, it has tritium in it. It has strontium in it. It has lots of things in it. It's terrible. It is terrible. And really, they're all just pretending like it's just not there and we don't have to worry about it because we can't see it. And they're not testing for it. So don't worry because we're not looking. It's not really there. I mean, it's 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 almost like what happens out in St. Louis. You know, normally on Mondays I interview activists from St. Louis. They're they're in they're going through this transformation out there of trying to figure out now that they've gotten all this attention, how do they manage it? And you know, there's remediated sites that are still hot, and it's very difficult to communicate that to people. They can't really remediate these sites very well. They don't really a they don't really have the technology to 100% remediate and b they don't do it very well. They don't care. The work is shoddy. And well, there there are, there's a group of whistleblowers who have come out well they haven't come out as far as who they are. We have figured out that they are upper management. Um, to some degree upper management because there's no way that they could know the things that they know without being upper management. And we found this out during the second set of whistleblower letters. But what they came out because um, every two years, Energy Northwest, a any nuclear power plant has to give a report on how they've done. And, and it's, it's ironic because, you know, what do you think they're going to say? They're going to say, like, we're awesome, you know? Yeah. And that's it. Well, that's exactly what Energy Northwest said. They said, we're awesome. We're not only awesome, we're 100% awesome. They're 100%. We've been perfect. We have a perfect record. And we did better than we did two years before that. And this, this was their report. So what happened was these whistleblowers said, no, you're not. And we know we're not. We're in, we're in a lot of danger. And you're causing danger. And you aren't reporting that to the board or to the people.
And it was a really big deal because these are whistleblowers. Well, Energy Northwest completely disregarded the whistleblowers at a board meeting. And the whistleblowers knew this. So the whistleblowers said, you cannot disregard us. So um, we, we are going to continue until this gets dealt with their issues about dangerous, you know, their dangerous jobs and the dangerous situation of CGS regarding how it's falling apart. That's what they were talking about. So two things, that workers are getting radiated and that the plant is falling apart. But they went into specifics. So Energy Northwest says, okay, we'll take you seriously. Um, this is the second one. We'll, we'll take you seriously. They hire Pillsbury Law Firm or something like that. I think it's called Pillsbury. And Pillsbury was the same law firm that the tobacco industry hired which won cases for the tobacco industry against the people. So this is who Energy Northwest hires. And Pillsbury says, okay, well, we'll go look into the complaints of the whistleblowers. So this happens. Then they go back to a board meeting, and Pillsbury says, everything's fine. We spoke to the workers. Well, the workers come out with another set of letters, and they said, this is how I knew that they were higher up. We know who you spoke to, and no one's supposed to know who they spoke to, you know. We know who you spoke to. We know how many you spoke to, and you didn't speak to us. You didn't speak to the higher-ups, not necessarily specifically the whistleblowers, or they would have been, you know, outed. But you didn't speak to the people who know, and you specifically went to the people who you knew would roll over. And so um, it's still, you know, they called bullshit on it. So then there was another board meeting. And at that board meeting, that's where yours truly was mentioned. They talked about having to go back and, and they, they still don't want to deal with the whistleblowers. And they brought up the fact that there are two initiatives coming out against them. And they mentioned No Nukes Northwest and they mentioned me directly, my name. Mm -hmm. And I found this out from somebody we work with and who was up there at the board meeting because it's a public meeting. You, anybody can go. And um, so I was called and I was told that they're talking about you now in the board meeting. And so all of this stuff is so important to understand because we got whistleblowers now coming out of the woodwork telling Energy Northwest all of your reports about how wonderful everything is working is a lie. And when I hear that, I think about the holes in the fuel rods. I think about the cracks in the jet fuel pump or whatever that was inside the um, cooling tower. I think about the cracks that we don't know about that they know about. I, I think about all of the testing that should be done on the plant to see where, and, and I keep mentioning cracks because they're really important, where all of the cracks are throughout the entire plant. I think about the leaks. I think about what the workers are exposed to. These people, these whistleblowers know all of this. And at the same time, this is where it's beautiful, at the same time, here we come, Lonnie. You and Kevin go up there. Of course they had a helicopter out for you. <laughs> they, it was really, okay. And when I was up there. This was all the stuff we didn't know beforehand. We didn't, we just, you know. Right, you guys just went, and you were awesome, because that's sometimes just what we got to do. We just got to go, you know. And um, so here, here they are, Energy Northwest, feeling people pressure not nuclear power pressure people pressure you show up what the hell is she doing here what are they doing here oh my god they're in their nuke wear you know you guys were in your zoot suits it was great and then you know i go up last june and they interrogated me for an hour and some you know thinking i was a terrorist and now they see the initiatives and at the same time even better are these whistleblowers so they're feeling the pressure and people listening to this, to this show, we have beyond an opportunity right now to shut this plant down. This plant is wasting money. That's part of the initiative. We know that. Uh, Robert McCulloch's um, economy reports that came out on CGS have shown twice now, just like a year and a half apart from each other, have shown that they are ripping off the citizens of Washington State and lying to you about it. But he has all the, his books are published now. It's, it's a published report. Um, Seattle City Council has his reports. They are aware of it. Um, they just got a new person in line at um, uh, C uh, Seattle City Lights, which is one of the biggest votes 
for nuclear power, and their boss is the mayor of Seattle. So we think that the mayor is finally going to get on board and tell, finally, and tell the new board of Seattle City Lights that he wants them to pull their vote from Wow, that would be awesome. Yeah. So well, look, just pulling up your page, just maybe this has a lot to do with it. That page of Shut Down CGS, when I looked at it, there's a letter, anonymous letter to Energy that's Northwest, that's questions of, you were just talking about this. That's the that's statistic that's what this says in here is that it was, it ranked 97 out of 99 efficient power plants. That was just one statistic. So, People making decisions about how to keep this plant running have got to look at this information. They can't just ignore it because they they want to. Right. And so the fact is, is that we've got whistleblowers who know the truth and they're coming out now and making Energy Northwest get real. And we'll see what happens. I mean, it's going to be a process. Yes. It will be a process, but, you know, we do need to get this initiative thing. I am going to be printing that down, and I am going to, and I think that's a great idea to try to engage citizens and ask them to actively engage and go up to the Native American tribes and lands. Maybe I'll be in touch with you on who to contact when I go up there. Maybe I can just, like, go in there and make a personal plea and bring some initiatives to them and hand them to them. I don't. I don't think it works that way. It's a lot more complicated for the really? tribes, but um, that's okay. We'll get. We'll get it done. Okay. Okay. I obviously am. You know, I feel like I'm cutting my teeth on this anti-nuclear stuff because I really have not really been actively engaged for t 10, 15 years. It's only been a few years. But Mimi, we have about a minute left. I want to thank you for uh, sharing this Monday with me, calming my nerves about my trip up to the Columbia Generating Station. I have to say it was quite nerve-wracking. Um, I want to encourage our listeners to please go to your website, which uh, you want to give it to them again so we say it correctly. It is radcast.org. That's right. And you can please look at the Washington initiatives. And to please, we encourage everyone to get as actively engaged as we can. To because even if you're on the West Coast, Hanford threatens you. Because if there's some kind of a problem, the wind blows east, west to east. So you will be affected. So, Mimi, I want to thank you. We have about 30 seconds left. Is there anything you'd like to share? And just... Well, just, you know, folks, we, we, we got a gift with these initiatives. It is a gift to help us shut down CGS. And I'm just asking that if you can find it within you to go download some of those and, and get signatures, be part of the gift for the earth. At this point, that's all we have left. Just be a gift, a final gift before the ship sinks. Amen. Put your courage feet on, you guys. Thanks for joining us, Mimi. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks, Lonnie.